Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is Digital One. Today, I'm going to discuss a very important concept called sourcing versus syncing. Now, you guys are going to be doing a number of labs where you're going to indicate the presence of a one or zero using an LED. So an LED is a device that you guys are going to be spending a lot of time discussing in EET 221 Semiconductor Devices and Circuits 1 but I'm gonna give you guys a precursor to it. So a LED is a light emitting diode. And a diode is basically an electrical check valve, very similar to our check valves in hydraulics, which you've all taken. Basically there's a ball that's fitted against a seat. When flow tries to go in this direction, it jams the ball on the seat and it cannot flow. And if flow tries to come this direction, it pushes the ball off the seat and it can flow. So that's exactly the same with a diode. Basically, a diode allows flow in this direction, think of the arrow, and does not allow electrical flow in this direction, think of the bar. Okay, think of a wall. And again, this is conventional current direction. Okay, electron flow, totally opposite. Okay, so conventional current flow does not flow in this direction, in uh, this direction here. Okay, so now how do we establish current flow? Well, we have to have a potential difference. Okay, so a diode with plus five volts on this side and plus five volts on that side, will it have any current going through it? The answer is no, because there is no potential difference. Okay, so that light emitting diode will not emit light because there is no current flow through it. Whereas this one would, because there is a potential difference across it, current flows and light will emit from it. Okay, now what happens here? Plus five volts on this side, zero volts on this side. There is a potential difference, but remember the definition of a diode. It's an electrical check valve. Current tries to go in this direction, but it can't. Okay, so that thing will not emit light. Okay? So now here is the kind of the purpose of this lecture here. What causes an LED to light in a digital circuit, a one or a zero? And the answer is it depends. And it depends on your arrangement of the LED. And that's either a sourcing arrangement or a sinking arrangement. So I'm gonna draw your attention to these two diagrams which I've drawn here. The first arrangement here, think of signal A. Obviously on the other side of that inverter is not A. It's the inversion of it. And A, signal A, could have any value as indicated by this timing diagram. The inversion of it, not A, could look like that. Okay, there's A, there's not A. So if A, let's say for example, was a zero, what does not A's value? It's a plus five volts or a one. So is there a potential difference at this point across that diode? Yes, there is. And current flows because it's electrical check valve and it's flowing in the correct direction. So that LED will light. So what's happened there? A zero has caused that LED to light. A zero on A has caused that LED to light. Now what happens when A is a one? When A is a one, it's inverted to a zero. And what do we have for a potential difference? So if it's zero volts on one side and zero volts on the other, current does not flow and the light does not light up. So in this arrangement, our first arrangement, which we talked about here, it looks like a zero 
is going to cause it to light up the LED. But what this is called, so our next slang term, this is a sourcing arrangement because A is providing the energy for the LED to light up. It's sourcing the energy. The, the, what I'm talking about is this NOT gate is sourcing the energy for the current to flow through the LED. Okay? And that makes sense because when that's a zero, it's creating the potential difference. The gate is creating the potential difference to drive current through the LED. And this is in total contrast to this arrangement over here. And this is what's known as a sinking arrangement. Okay? So now notice on this side of the LED, we have a plus five already. So what would cause that to light a zero on this side, basically establishing a potential difference across the LED and current will flow. So what do we need to get a zero? Well, A needs to be a one. Okay, so the answer is, like I said earlier, it depends a one or zero, depending upon your arrangement to get the LED to light. Okay, so a sourcing arrangement, excuse me, a sinking arrangement, this is the way it was described to me as a student. You've got a sink full of water, i.e. plus five volts. All it needs is a path to ground for current to flow. And all you do for the path to ground, you pull out the plug and it flows to ground, okay? So what you're doing is you're providing a sinking to ground. You provide a ground as a path for a sinking arrangement, okay? So now in the opposite case here, what happens when A is a zero? It's a one there, i.e. a plus five volts for TTL logic. There is no potential difference, and our LED does not light, okay? So sourcing versus sinking, a very important concept in your labs because what causes your LEDs to light up? In this sourcing arrangement, a zero causes it to light up. In this sinking arrangement, a one causes it to light up. Okay, so if I gave you four LEDs, and let's say this guy's lit, this guy's lit, and you are in a sourcing arrangement, what does that represent? Well, if it's if you're taking signal A there, basically this would be a zero, one, one, zero, and what I'm doing is a three, a two, a one, a zero. But if I was using a sinking arrangement, that would be one, zero, zero, one. Okay, get it? Because you're going to get very confused in labs if you are thinking that you're in a sinking arrangement, but you're actually in a sourcing arrangement because, as you can see, they're totally opposite of each other. Just think of what causes that LED to light up, okay? Sourcing versus sinking, two important concepts to distinguish when you're working with digital circuits.